name is Greg Todd, and today we're at the Amani Garden here in Weeksville, Brooklyn, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about greenhouses. We started this garden about uh, eight, nine years ago, and the first thing we did was build a cheap greenhouse. Remember, don't do that, because our greenhouse drove us crazy. We made it out of conduit, electrical conduit, and plastic drop cloths. And at least twice every other year, we had to replace the plastic because it got shredded by the wind. So now we're going to show you how to do the right thing. Okay, guys, are you ready? So here we are now in front of a brand new improved greenhouse. And you might wonder, though, first, why it is we were so into having a greenhouse. And I think there's effectively four things you need to know. Four things you need to know about greenhouses. Number one is they convert solar energy into heat. And that heat can extend your growing season. You can start growing earlier and you can grow later into the year. So you get probably three or four months extra growing out of your garden. Number two, it blocks the wind. And those really windy days, and if you're a windy part of the country, wind is really stressful for plants like me. They like to be out of the wind. The greenhouse blocks the wind. Number three, it keeps pests away from your plants. Pests, as smart as they are, have not figured out how to fly through a greenhouse yet. They're probably working on it, but not yet. And number four, the greenhouse helps keep the humidity in the greenhouse and with your plants so they don't dry out as quickly as they would outdoors. So those are four advantages. Solar heat, wind blockage, pest avoidance, and humidity. So once you decide to have a greenhouse, then you got to think about what kind of greenhouse. Well, uh, there's really for the average person two kinds of greenhouses. If you go with something like this, which is what you would call a hobbyist greenhouse. And it's basically made of a steel frame with corrugated polycarbonate panels. There's a, a few advantages to the hobbyist greenhouse. The chief is that these polycarbonate panels are incredibly hard. You could drop a giant hailstone on it, a big rock or whatever else you got, and it will just bounce off it. It will last for years and years and years. And the other big advantage is it's got flat walls. So you maximize the growing usable space inside the greenhouse. It also has, as you can see here, little pop-up windows that will automatically open when it gets hot inside and close when it gets cold. So it's a nice feature. So that's your basic greenhouse, uh, polycarbonate hobbies. The other big option, typical, is what we have here is what we call a hoop house. Now this is a miniature, miniature hoop house. But it gets its name from the fact that it's got these hoops. And you can make them over your garden, over your, I should say, uh, raised bed, and attach it. Typically, people build these much, much bigger. They can be as 60, 80 feet, 100 feet long, 20, 30, 60 feet wide. And they use steel, like one inch diameter galvanized steel rail. And they will bend this with a jig. And they can build these, as I was saying, very long and very wide. And they're covered typically with plastic. But it's very special plastic. It comes in giant sheets. And it's been treated to be UV resistant. The reason our earlier greenhouse failed so readily is the plastic was just very cheap drop cloth, not UV treated, and it shreds after maybe two years max. The sun destroys it, the wind doesn't. So the big hoop greenhouses are UV treated plastic, and they use giant sheets so you don't have to deal with pacing together. So that's really probably the most common form for medium-sized greenhouses. The, the, size, the type of greenhouse we're now talking about, obviously, the commercial greenhouses. And that's a whole nother discussion. And your main 
may have noticed we got this crazy looking device here. And what this is is a solar heater that helps heat our greenhouse during the fall and spring months of the year. And it's what we call an evacuated tube greenhouse. We have here an array of 30 tubes, each about seven feet long, six feet long. It's actually two tubes, an outer tube, which is a very hard glass, and inside that tube is a second tube. Between the two tubes is a vacuum. Inside the inner tube, we have water running through the black coating. And the sun heats up the black coating, heating the water inside the inside tube. But the heat does not go to the outside of the tube because of the vacuum. And you'll see it's completely cold on the outside. The inside now is probably about 80 degrees. So that's the genius of the vacuum tube, keeps the heat where you want it, doesn't lose it to the environment. We bought this particular array from on eBay, and uh, it's a good place to buy these things. You know, we got a, the whole uh, whole setup here for about eighteen hundred dollars. It came in a few boxes, and it basically um, is used mostly in the United States for heating swimming pools. In China. They use them to heat hot water, and about one third of the domestic hot water in China now is generated by these types of evacuated tube systems. And this is where these tubes are in fact made in China. So, how do we use this water to heat the greenhouse? Well, basically, inside the greenhouse, we have three 55 gallon drums filled with water. So, what happens is the water gets heated in these tubes and then we have a very very small 12 volt DC pump at the base of the system that pumps the water up through the tubes into these 355 gallon tanks and it heats them up and then it flows back out and continues the cycles through. So we've noticed we've been taking measurements now in the month of February right now it's the very end of February beginning of March the heated drums are about 15 to 20 degrees hotter than the unheated drums inside the greenhouse. We calculated that we saved about three gallons of propane by using the sun to heat our water. So for those of you who don't like to use fossil fuels, it gives you a sense of how much advantage you get by using the sun to heat your water. So here we are now inside the greenhouse, and these are the three barrels that I referenced earlier. One, two, three. This is the water coming in off the solar stack, and our little temperature indicator says it's 84 degrees now, coming in off the stack versus 77 in the greenhouse. But the barrels here are now heated up and according to my reading now with my infrared thermometer, the temperature of the barrels is 80 degrees. <clears throat> almost at what the temperature of coming in on the stack is. Now just for comparison's sake, over here we've got four barrels that are unheated. And I just took a temperature reading on one of them and it read 44 degrees. So we have almost a 40 degree difference here between the heated barrels and the unheated barrels. So it gives you a sense of how much heat we're getting for free from the sun. Now I want to talk a bit about another technology that's just coming out to the market that's actually an improvement on the solar uh, heating tubes. The problem with the solar heater tubes, as you saw when we were outside, is they take up a lot of space. And some of my garden members are not happy because they would like to be using that space for growing vegetables. But we can't do that. With the new technology I'm referring to called GAT, or Ground Air Heat Transfer, G-A-H-T. They would take a greenhouse like this and they would excavate 10 feet down underneath the greenhouse, they would then put in a series of four inch pipes 
threw out underneath like a web underneath the greenhouse. They would then put insulation around the outside of the excavated hole in the ground, and then they would backfill with soil and gravel. What they do then is during the hot summer months, when the greenhouse will reach over 120 degrees, they will use blowers, wall fans, to force the heat into the ground. So now they have a big, basically, heat battery in the ground underneath the greenhouse. During the cold winter months, they reverse the fans and pump that heat into the greenhouse to heat it up. So the heat source now is the ground under the greenhouse. No space outside is wasted. And you go vertical rather than horizontal, still using the sun to heat the air. In this case, heating the air in the greenhouse itself. This has many benefits. One is you less wasted space. Two, it helps cool off the greenhouse during the summer months when it's too hot. So basically the ground now is cooling the greenhouse during the summer and heating it in the winter. In effect, the ground is a storage battery for heat or cold. And the, one of the first people to use this technology is a gentleman named Jerome Oskatowski at the Central Colorado Permaculture Institute, the Central Rocky Permaculture Institute, and he called it a climate battery. Uh, but further practitioners have come up with the term uh, ground air heat transfer because it's maybe a little more indicative. But So that about wraps it up, guys. And if you have any questions, we're here. You can look us up at Facebook, Amani Garden. That's I-M-A-N-I -I Garden on Facebook. My name is Greg, and happy gardening out there.